Oh, okay. Hello, everybody. Hey, I've got something here that David wants me to put out to everybody. I don't know if you know this, but David works with the Kairos uh, Jail Ministry. It's a, it's a national program. Yes. International? National. International. International program. And uh, it's, you know how the Bible tells us that we're supposed to go to the jails, you know, and talk to the people in the jails and whatnot? Well, that's what this ministry does. Every year, last year, he brought in one of these things where we commit to pray on a certain time for a certain period for the ministry. So I'm going to pass this around. If the Lord lays it on your heart, it's not till May time frame. May 15th. Yeah. But it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Right. You'll see it in here. The dates are in here. And the times are here. If I mean, if the Lord lays it on your heart to pray during that half hour period, sign up for it and remember to do it. Okay? So I'll just start passing it around. And if the Lord lays it on your heart, fill it out. And then just make sure that... Either I or Sally or Dave gets it back. We'll make sure Dave gets it back either or way. Sally, anybody want this? Yeah. She's my sister and slate. Sl uh, I mean, yeah. sister. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Yeah. See, it works both ways. What can I say? <laughs> I just see you two going up together. Oh, boy. What? I thought you usually don't want that there. Oh, it won't be there as soon as I click on it. Yeah, it'll go away. It'll go to the background. Trying to help. Yeah, yeah. So, see there, Charisma? He doesn't want you being up there. Anyway. But, uh, okay. Well, so when that goes dark, does, does it go dark? It goes darker because there's sunlight coming in over there. And the sunlight makes me more almost like a silhouette. Shadow. Yeah, shadow kind of thing. Because the light's just stronger behind me. Shadow creature. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Shadow creature. So, <laughs> sounds science fiction y or something, you know? He says only, only the shadow knows. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Darkness and light, weren't we talking about that last week? That's right. Yeah. So, okay. Here's what we're going to do. We've still got two weeks after today. Amen. Okay, so what we're going to do today, we're going to cover the rest of the relationships issue. Remember last week we talked about the husband and wife relationship? And then we saw how Paul contrasted the church and human marriage. Christ and the church versus human marriage, the man and the wife, right? We saw how he brought that together. One of the things that we really have to take away from that is that... God is a God of relationships. And that's what Paul is addressing here as we're going through these topics, the ones of uh, the marriage. Hey, by the way, Kathy didn't say anything bad about your marriage yesterday, Dave, so don't worry about it. But... <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> She was saying you guys have a model marriage and that everything is, man, if, if there was a biblical marriage to model, it's, it's yours. He's giving you a face that he knows yeah. better. He knows the point. Uh-oh. I'm going to be beat up before this is over. That would be pretty good. Yeah, amen. Amen. 42. Yeah. That is awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> that's even harder. Yeah, that's a lot. But I, I wanted to talk about a few things before we get into chapter 6, but we're not going to get into the spiritual warfare today. I want to take two weeks to talk about spiritual warfare because it is real in our culture today. Amen. And we need to look and see what the Bible says, not just what Paul is talking about, but how that is supported throughout the rest of the scripture too. And how Jesus has given us the power to be able to deal with spiritual warfare in our lives today. And it's not something that we just, you know, kind of take as a, well, it's a daily thing, it happens, you know, don't worry about it. But we're actually called to do something about it. And we're going to study that the last two weeks, okay? But... 
Today, I just want to focus mainly on relationships because that's another area that Satan is really attacking our families today is in the family relationship area. And it's not, it's not godly, it's not healthy, and it's not right. I mean, we're seeing you know, families broken up that have been together for many, many years mm -hmm. because Satan gets in with things that you would say, well, that's such a trivial matter. Why, you know, are you letting that thing break up a long-lasting relationship that's going on? But it's happening. Mm -hmm. And another area that Satan is really hitting on is he's minimizing relationship. A lot of people today are living together instead of committing together. In other words, it's easier just to kind of shack up and say, hey, you know, when you're tired of me, you can go. Or if I'm tired of you, I can go. No commitments, you know. And, and you see that a lot today. Who have heard the term like friends with benefits? You know, it's a term that's out there that basically says no commitment. Just do what makes you happy. Isn't that called plenty of fish? Plenty. <laughs> so there you go. See, plenty of fish in the sea, right? You got to take as, as much advantage as you can. It's a go website. Ahead, it's huh? a website. It's a website. It, it's a what? Oh, it's oh, it is. It's a dating site. Oh, see, I didn't even know about that. I thought I was the one that had the sexual problem. I, I better go. Where, what's the website? <laughs> Man, you guys know this stuff. I thought you were going to teach me or something. Yeah. If you really want to know, we can have lunch. <laughs> hey, Tina. What, what's this? Yeah. Well, she taught me everything. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Well, then in that case, then. Yeah, David. I actually saw on the news where these men uh -huh. or women that their mate is deeply into... Uh, Alzheimer's okay. and not really functioning all that much, they have a live-in come in and they're, they're comforted by uh, the, hmm. another female. Oh, so you've been studying that? No. I oh, oh, I thought you were looking into it for <laughs> some <laughs> personal need. Or I, I saw it saw it for news. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. It the is. News. It, isn't that sad? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go, I'm sorry. I just said, I think he said no. <laughs> <laughs> See, we love you, David. See there? Yeah. We're looking out for you. I, I can't wait. Here. I can't wait. I can't wait for the next two weeks. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> See there? But uh, so these are real things that are going on in our lives today. But you say, well, then how can we overcome these problems that are so pervasive, not just within our culture, but within our families today? How many of you have families where you've got a homosexual that's part of your family? Right? This happens, doesn't it? I mean, it's real. Hey, I had an uncle. Well, he passed away. That was my aunt. Okay, you understand that? And uh, he passed away. I mean, he lived 80 years. She, he, whatever. But anyway, uh, but... I'll tell you what, it was rough on him, you know, having changed. And I think we did him a disservice in our family because, hey, he did this when I was a kid. When I was maybe around eight years old, he did this. And our family did not love him. Okay. His brothers, that's right, his brothers, his mom and pop, you know, everybody shunted him because... Well, remember what I said last week, how I said, if I disclosed that I had this type of sexual problem, how people would not come around me. Instead, they would probably distance themselves from me, kind of like, well, I'm not so sure I want to be associated with him. Because if anyone else knew I was associated with Ted and he's got these problems, they might think I've got those problems. But yet in the body of Christ, we're called to come together and uphold these people that are caught in their sin and help them get out of it. You know, that's part of what the body of Christ should be. And it doesn't matter what the sin is. You know, we're the ones that categorize sin. Right. We're the ones that make a sin worse than another sin. It's not God. Hey, sin's all bad to God, period. It's, it's basically an affront to God, whatever sin you do. We're the ones that make one like, oh, God can't love you if you're this kind of a sinner. 
Remember when Jesus was being had her feet being had his feet being washed by the the prostitute lady, you know, and put you know the appointment on her. What did the Pharisees say? What kind Why is he letting a sinner do this to me? Oh yeah, well, doesn't he know what kind of woman that is? She's a sinner. Why is he letting her? You notice how we do that, don't we? But I love what his answer was. I came in. You didn't. You didn't get on my head. You didn't, you didn't get washed my feet. Amen. This woman's been kissing my feet the entire time I've been here. Amen. Washing them with her tears and anointing them. Amen. You haven't. You, a Pharisee, haven't done anything. You didn't give me a slave to wash my feet. You didn't do anything. See, yeah. that's human nature. When it's all about me, the Pharisee showed that really clearly that day, didn't they? Yeah. Simon, that Pharisee, showed that problem. And I was just going to say that. You know, my wife and I have talked about it. And, sure. And when we were adopting, we said, what happens if it ends up that he's gay? Mm -hmm. okay. and, and I really thought about it, and I said, you know, the bottom line is he would still be our son, and I still love him. Amen. I would always love him. I would tell him that what he's doing is wrong. Right. Amen. And, 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 and give him the scripture on it, but would I, would I change my feelings towards him? Right. And to me, when people do that, like with your uncle, mm -hmm. it's not about your uncle. It's about, well, how does that make the family look? Right. How do we look to others? Exactly. And that's really self-centered. And I think one of the things is, when I read James 1, cha uh, chapter 1, verse 2, where it says, count it all joy when you go through various <laughs> trials, I think God puts those situations mm -hmm. in your families and in your life to see how you are going to treat. Um, and I think many of us fall short in that respect because we consider ourselves better than that person. Yeah. You know, because, well, we're not homosexual, so yeah, I'm fine, right? But the reality is none of us is fine. No, you know, I don't care what you think you are in terms of the best person out there. You're not good enough. For that. Even, when, even when Jesus was told, hey, good master, Right? Mm -hmm. Jesus told that rich young ruler, there's none good except God. And, I mean, if the rich young ruler had understood what he said, he could have realized that what he was really saying was he was telling Jesus that he was God. But he hadn't gotten that far. <laughs> so, I mean, that was a problem, right? Yeah, Victor. Speaking of that, uh, some are uh, really extravagant in their uh, moods or modes or whatever you want to call it. And some are just like normal people. Right. And behind the scenes, you don't know what to do. Right. But some are out there, and they've got this, this agenda you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you can tell just by looking at them. Right, They're right. Wanting them. And, and I'll tell you, it's not everybody, and I hate to say it, but it should be to where every Christian should be able to go up to them and show them Christ's love. Amen. You know, but we tend to categorize people. That's just what we do. We all have our prejudices. And those are the things that we have to shed to build relationship. And I'll tell you, it's not easy because the problem is we want to look good in the eyes of men. If somebody sees us hanging with a gay person, guess what? People are going to talk. And guess who the first ones are? Your brothers and sisters in Christ. That's the sad part. Bless her. <laughs> so I mean these are real things that happen in the body of Christ and it's sad but it does happen so let's take a look then and see just kind of touch base on a few things that we talked about last week because I, I really want us to be talking about relationship here today I want us to be talking about these difficulties that we have in family and see what it is that Paul's talking about in Ephesians 5 and Ephesians 6 that deal with this whole issue of relationship. I'm going to start all the way back here in, at the end of chapter 4. Look what he says in verse 32 of chapter 4. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. You can't start a relationship with somebody if you have a grievance against them. If you have something in between you and your brother or your sister, you're never going to develop a relationship with them because you're going to say, 
you know, they're going to do me wrong if I turn my back on them. Or, you know, whatever their problem is, it's just a bigger problem, and it's their fault, not mine. You know what I'm saying? It's that kind of thing that detracts us from being the brother and sister or the witness to that person because, hey, we're falling into the same trap that the world has out there. And actually, what's sad is that the world now accepts those people a lot more than we do. And our judgment is what turns them away. And that's what they see. And that's why we have this label of hypocrite. It doesn't mean you're associated with a hippopotamus, but it does mean <laughs> it means you say something, but you don't live up to it. Love covers magnitude of all sins. Amen. 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 So, and I'll tell you what, when you look at that, when you look at what love does, love requires sacrifice. And if you're going to be able to carry out in Philippians what Paul said, consider others better than yourselves, you have to humble yourself to be able to interact with any person, with any type of sinful problem they may have, and tell them of the love of Christ, right? I mean, that's the only way it's going to work. But you can't put yourself over them because I'll tell you, people are looking to see if you're going to put yourself over them. If you're saying I'm better than you, you're going to turn them off right away, aren't you? Because it's like, well, I, you don't need me. I don't need you. You know, you go find somebody that you're not as better than, you know, type of thing. Yeah. Oh, it was really cool. It was, uh, it was um, inviting the folks from the Pulse nightclub. Uh, yeah, and to the church here. Church here. Yeah. I know where they found the Lord because of that. Amen. Amen. And we had some of the officers come in too. Remember yes. that? Yeah. I mean, I think when we do things like that, I think they're too small and spread apart. We should be doing it more often. You know, not just waiting for something notable like that, but it should be a part of who we are. It should be part of our fiber. Love thy neighbor. Amen. All the time. Not just when, hey, we can get some press time if we do no, it to these people. That wasn't the point. I know it wasn't no, the no, point. No, no. But the point. what I'm saying is that, hey, we took advantage of that situation to show Christ's love, right? Are we doing it 100% of the time? That's the question. You see my point? And I'm not trying to knock the church for what they did. I'm not. Okay? It's a body and whole is what we do our work outside the church. Believe me. It, exactly. You know, it, I, I have a men's group that I participate in. Martin participates in. Sure, sure. Uh, we've had men who have come to the group who have been, we open, it's been invited to any man. Amen. So Amen. men who have come as gay, men who have come sure, as sure. atheists, uh -huh. today they still come. And we hope to get profession of faith out Good. of them. And we show them the, the love of Christ. Amen. And Amen. we've had within the church, in our church leadership group, or other, this is part of a church affiliated group. Sure. And we've had other like uh, men say, no, we don't want these men in our group. And I said, absolutely, then you should not be participating. Amen. Oh, that's, oh, Amen. Like that. and, and that's yeah. right. Because, look, a lot of times we think we're the ones that are going to change them. Hey, we have no power to change anybody. Anyway. If we're going to change, we need to let the Holy Spirit do the work because he's the one that does the work in them for changing their hearts. It's not us that do that. But we need to live up to the standard that Christ put forward for us to represent him to those people and let the Holy Spirit do his work. That's the way it works. Doesn't that work the other way too? A man uh, marries a woman and he says... Well, she's got some bad habits, but I'm going to change her as time goes by. <laughs> never <laughs> works, right? You're right. He's the unevenly yoked one. <laughs> You're never going to change. <laughs> hey, those people that get married with that yeah, thought, yeah. wrong, yeah, no, won't work. Never will work. You're not going to change that person. That person has to want to change yeah. themselves for it to work. And that's the same way with following Christ. If we're going to be effective to the people, we have to know that we're representing Christ the way he wants us to represent him. If we're not representing him in love and in caring and in compassion and in mercy and in grace, just like he's done for us, they're not going to see this. They're not going to see the love of Christ in us. And they're going to throw us off and say, hey, man, I don't want nothing to do with you. And then they're just going to throw you into the hypocritical category. And believe me, that word's out there a lot more than you can imagine right now. 
I mean, I, we've been, uh, Kathy and I, 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 I'm sorry, I've been using her a lot, but when we went out doing I've been EE, using her a lot. <laughs> when we've been out doing EE some years back, one of the things that we found, you know, uh, for some of the people we witnessed to, that hypocrite thing came out. They didn't say it in a mean way, but they said it. And the issue is, if they said it, they're thinking it. And they're looking, too. They're trying to see, ah, yeah, you say one thing, but then you do a whole, whole totally different thing. Was it Gary Williams who had EE at that time? No. What was the name of that Air Force guy? Oh, but Gary Williams was in charge. And guess what? I saw him. You did? He was at, um, we were doing, we have a prison ministry. I'm in another prison ministry. Okay. Uh -huh. and, and Gary joined our prison ministry. Sweet. And he's wow. one of the um, people that. I didn't meet him, did I? He was the last one before Andrew. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, so then I was there with the one before him then, before Gary. Because he was an Air Force guy. Remember an older gentleman? Oh, you mean the older guy. Yeah, He's the older guy. to the Lord. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think he did pass away. I think he did pass away. But that's when I was in EE with you, was back in his day. Yeah. So, but look, but then look at what he tells us to do. I'm still getting to the prayer, okay? This is still intro. I haven't, I haven't well, this finished. Well, rid, rid of the thing on this screen. Yeah, 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 okay. At least. But look what we're called to. If we're going to be effective, just like I was saying, if we're going to model Christ, what do we have to be? We have to be imitators of God in everything we do, right? We have to shed this old self and become the new man. As beloved children, okay? So in other words, Romans 8 says that we were adopted. We are co-heirs with Jesus Christ, right? So in the process of being his brother or sister, we need to imitate God and walk in love, not in condescension, not in condemnation, but in love as Christ loved us and gave up himself for a fragrant offering. Ah, bonk. A, a sacrifice to God, right? Now, we talked about the sins and things that should not be part of us, you know, because, I mean, those are things that don't lead to a good testimony before the Lord. And uh, so, and he, we talked about that we need to be that light. And remember, Jesus talked about salt and light back in Matthew chapter 5, right? We need to be light in the Lord, you know, so that we're shining through that darkness that's out there. The Holy Spirit does that work. So uh, when you expose anything to light, it becomes visible, right? For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, and then we just go into the uh, Isaiah thing, look carefully how you walk. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So that's what we need to do. We need to just make sure that we understand what is the will of the Lord in what we are doing, right? It's not living like the world, but representing Christ in everything we do. If we don't do that, then we got trouble, right? So in the process of it, we worship the Lord, thank him for everything that he's done, and we look to him through Jesus Christ, submitting to one another, and that the submitting part is similar to what James is talking about in chapter 5, where we are to confess our sins to one another. When we do that, we know each other's business. Oh, boy, we don't like knowing each other's business today, right? Hey, I don't want to tell you my secrets. But, rumors. Or, or rumor. Well, that's what comes out. If you don't share your secrets, guess what? Rumors do come out. But if you share your secrets, then you know what the person is really dealing with, and then you can come around them and help them out of their issue. That's what brothers and sisters are for, and that's what our, we are gifted to do, is to meet that need that the other brother and sister has. So we should come meeting. around, rally around. Huh? Prayer meeting is rumor meeting. Well, it can be, and it should never be, that you yes. use a prayer as a means of getting out gossip. Oh, yeah. But it does happen. I agree with you, it happens, but that is wrong, and it does not please the Lord when we do that. You know, because that's slander. Fundamentally, that's what it comes down to, that's is slander. Spirit, I mean, that's right. There's, that's right. That's right. So we've got to be really careful 
to make sure that we're walking in a way that pleases the Lord and uplifts our brothers and sisters in whatever situation they are. Just remember, we all are in sin. We all need help. It's not like anyone is better than the other, that none have sinned. Baloney, you know, uh, baloney, it's a meat from Italy or something, I think. But anyway. <laughs> but this is. <laughs> yeah, it's probably unclean meat, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, once we understand this, that we submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And you say, why is it reference for Christ? Because Christ is the head of the body. We make up the body. And we need to be united and connected to Christ in everything we do, right? That's understood. But look then what he does. Now he starts building relationships. He starts talking about, okay, in the process of all of this that we've been talking about, let's build relationship. He talked about wives and husbands. And here's what I said last week. Remember that. That a woman... And a man coming together in marriage, none is more special than the other. They're actually equal, okay? The question is, when God created man and woman, he created them with roles, okay? He didn't create the man to be a king, you know, or a monarch over the woman. That was never the plan. As a matter of fact, when God was talking to himself, I know that sounds a little weird, but he says, we shall make... What did he say? We shall provide for him a help me or a helper, right? And then that God created woman out of man. So she has a role of being a helper to a man. Now, is a helper a servant? No. Don't, wait, 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 wait. No. Just a minute, Kathy. Listen to what I'm saying. Is a helper, is a, helper a servant in Jesus's definition? Oh, and Jesus definitely. Oh, man. <laughs> Remember Jesus what Carl. Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but to serve. Right? Yeah. So when he came to serve, he became a helper and a servant to all. So in essence, the woman is fulfilling that servant role to the man. Now, I didn't say that she became a slave. Don't get me wrong in that. She has a role, but she's equal to man in the sense that they are both before the Lord. They both have a role. The man has the leadership role. But how many men have been made what they are because of the woman? Yeah. Many you see? Yeah. <laughs> David's like, I don't know about that. Well, I don't. Really? Well, really? They're blessed by what you have a life. Like, well, <laughs> well, I'm not making any money. <laughs> I need a woman there that'll make me some money. <laughs> but anyway, but see, when these rules are understood, not that one is superior to the other. But one has a, a leadership role and one has the servant role. When you see that relationship, they actually are complementary. And a lot of times we don't, we don't look at it that way. We look at it like she wants to be the leader, he wants to be the leader. You can't have two leaders. Well, that's how he leads by being a servant. Well, that's, that's what this says. This says that for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Okay, when it puts it in that position, hey, if Christ gave his body, his life for the church and for each and every one of us, that's where the husband should be. The husband should be surrendered to give for his wife. His life is his all because that's what God created her to be. You see? Go ahead, Jeanette. Oh, it's going to say, well, Mary is the ministry. That's your first ministry. That's right. So you are to serve each other. And Amen. 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 That's right. See, the problem is, is that we get too focused on how the world sees marriage and that you think if you have a, like if you see the word submit or servant associated with a woman, you've automatically demeaned her. And see, in Christ's vernacular, that's not that way. Actually, she is the help me. She's the strength behind the man. Who's the one that said uh, Proverbs 31? Was that you, Jeanette? 
Yeah, the woman, right? That perfect woman or ideal woman, I guess you would say. But what you see is a woman that is truly helping her husband. Her husband goes out and sits in the gate and he does his business because that's where he, a wise man ends up sitting, right? But she does everything so when he comes home, it's all done. Today, we don't like hearing that. It's like, no way, man, forget it. I'm not going to do that. He can do his own stuff, you know? <laughs> Well, that's because we as husbands don't help that situation. Well, and that's another problem. Sometimes we take advantage, and that's not right that's either. Deny, deny so it stuff. works both ways. But Jesus said if you want to lead, you have to serve first. That's right. You've got to be a servant. A before servant before of all. Before you ever become a and you have to humble yourself to be exalted. Yeah. See, those are all right, uh, I mean, those are all prime principles that if you don't understand them, you're going to have a dysfunctional marriage at some level. Because when you understand them, then you, you find that there's strength actually in the roles the way God created them here. Yeah, go ahead, Jenna. I mean, not to go the Bible, but I feel like cool is the five love languages. Yeah, yeah, that's a great book. Because you tend to give the love, you tend to give your spouse your own love language instead of giving them their right. love language. True, true. Well, and I think one of the things is, is that we need to understand that men and women are complex. It's not a simple thing where you can say, if, if you do this, it will always be this way, right? A, there are things like moody people, right? And it happens to Christians. We get moody sometimes. Oh, I wouldn't know about that. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. I thought they said that a man was like an on-off switch and a woman was like a multiprocessor. Oh, my. Yeah. Well, really? women do do better that way, actually. They actually have more multifunction capability than a man does. Man's more focused in terms of what they want to get done, and they'll go like a ramrod to get it done, right? Whereas women, they look at how much they do around their whole requirement. I mean, they multitask, yeah. Do you think when God made woman to help man back then, that he knew today it was going to take two people income? To make it go. Oh, I have no doubt. I have no, no doubt. I, that, that, that's not everywhere. No. But, I mean, it, that's for our culture, for the most part, depending on where you live. If you're middle, middle-income America, that's where you're going to be because you can't survive in our country on a basic amount of money. But you have to have more. You living wage anywhere and, 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 yeah. still, and well, still have roles defined. Oh, something. sure, sure. And I mean, but that's but that's problematic too, though. It's not good for a culture where both people work and they don't have the time together because I mean, that breaks relationship. Remember, we're talking about relationship here, and that's what's crucial. Right. Yeah, Mark. Principle applies to your boss between children and parents. That's right. I mean, how can you children today basically in their house do whatever they want? That's, that's right. It's chaos, and they're letting they don't want and, to leave. And it's happening. Hang on, the same time in yeah. our own children's ministry here. It's like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 got, you got Christian. And that's just the teachers. <laughs> you got, you got, sorry, guys. You got Christian brothers called sisters. Right. They don't think they, they can't obey their boss. So how, right, how right. is that going to work? Good, no, it's, good it's, point. It's, so it's not right. just between your husband and wife. No, no. The principle applies that's right. Problems. That's right. Because it has to be leadership. That's right. But see, it's every single one of those situations requires relationship. It's not just about me look out for number one. That's our culture says. But see, that's the why we have problems interacting with people because we're always thinking you have something bad in, in store for me. I know what I need. And so that's why it's always antagonistic. I shouldn't say always, but in most cases, you find like you've got something against me. And that's where the students are today. A lot of the younger students, they, they don't like authority figures, and they think that if you're an authority figure, you've got something against them and that you're going to make them do something they don't want to do. And so they go against them because they're, they're trying to look out for number one. That's not what the Lord calls us to. The Lord calls us to love each other, love one another. If we're going to do that, I mean, we have to learn to do it in every walk of life. But, I mean, right now, look at what he's talking about. He's talking about not only are we doing it at the marriage level, but the church is the contrast that Paul is drawing. He's saying, look at what the contrast. The contrast is that Christ and the church is that mystery, that 
ability to love and bring together. Remember, the church is supposed to be the bride of Christ, unspotted, right? That's where we're supposed to be. I don't know if we're unspotted, but anyway, uh, you know, that's where, you know, with Christ at the head, we should be totally clean and pure. We are, but only through Jesus Christ, because he died and redeemed the church. Okay, so we the church are redeemed, but we need to also come together in unity and not make it about each individual, but collectively as the body of Christ and love serving others. That's what he calls us. And that's why he uses that so strongly. See, there he talks about, you know, without, uh, without spot or wrinkle, you know, the church should be that way. And husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. No one ever hated his own flesh. So, I mean, it's part of coming together in unity together in love if we're going to be effective. So, uh, hang on. So, that's where we are uh, because we're a member of, of his body, and that's where he's talking about the mystery I mentioned last week, and I'm just saying right now. It refers to Christ and the church. That's a mystery because, I mean, it's not something that we do naturally. It's something that has to be supernatural for it to work in and through us, right? The body of Christ. <clears throat> okay, any questions so far on any of the topics that I've talked about just in the intro? I know it was a long intro, <laughs> but I needed, I needed to build that because even Martin talked about children and parents, and we're going to be jumping to them next. And it's a crucial point that we need to see that if you have a dysfunctional marriage, guess what? Where will dysfunction be? with the children too, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and first. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was saying without unity, there is nothing to be done with the body of Christ. Amen. Prayer can't be answered, especially if you don't mean strife. That's right. So you, you, you're saying something, but then you're down with the way it doesn't, doesn't work. Well, I'll tell you, there's power in unity. You know? In unity. Yeah, there's power in unity. Will the Lord hear our individual prayers? Yes, he will. But what he wants to see is a united body, a united church, that when we raise our prayers, kind of like the Kairos prayers, when we come together in unity in the body of Christ and raise up those specific topics of you know, prayer, I mean, all that comes before the Lord. And if you look in Revelation, it says that that's a sweet savor aroma to the Lord when our prayers come up to him. So I think that that's important for us to get together, come together in unity, and in worship so that it brings the right praise to the Lord in the process. And when we live for him, that brings him worship and praise too. When we live the way he tells us to here. Okay? Yeah, Mark. I was just saying, before I mentioned that, the word says we are hypocrites. Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> there are certain sins that the church, also the church of Christians commit. Right. That gives the reason for uh, for the word to cause it. Hypocrite. You're right. Yeah. I agree. You know, we are sinners. Right. But if you know someone that at work says he's a Christian and he's an adultery, yep. right there. <coughs> Co workers are right. saying, well, he, he said he's a Christian, but. Uh, yeah. yeah. His actions say he doesn't care about this other uh, stuff. No one knows about the other thing that he has, but that one is obvious. Yeah. yeah. They caught him, right? Kind of like the Pharisees who caught the woman in adultery, right? Jesus took, you know, took pity on her and forgave her sin. But where was the guy? They didn't bring the guy. And in accordance with Leviticus, both, or in Deuteronomy, both were supposed to have been brought before the Lord. And both were supposed to have been stoned. And probably one of the Pharisees that brought her is the one that, that got caught. Yeah, David. Actually, last year, yeah. you described what hypocrite actually came from. <laughs> yeah. It came from the acting. Hip, hip. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I actually learned something last year. <laughs> and you remembered it. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> yes. It's uh, actors that were in the Hippodrome. On the play. In the play. Mm -hmm. Which was really cool. I never forgot that. Yeah. It was yeah. Very impressive. Yeah. Oh, well, forgot thank the you. rest of it. Praise the Lord. Said. Now, yeah, hypocrite, <laughs> you got to remember, hypocrite back then didn't mean exactly what it means here today. It, it's kind of the term that you can apply to hypocrite the way they used it back then is two-face. Because what they would do right. is 
The actors in a play back then had masks right. that were on sticks. You've probably seen those. Yeah. Yeah. And they would act from this side, put on one mask and play that, that individual. And they would put on this mask, turn this way, and play a different individual <laughs> like they're interacting. They were called hypocrites because of the way that their play ended up. It didn't mean, it wasn't a negative term, it just was the way that the play worked out. But what it said about the people was that if you were a hypocrite, you were two-faced, or maybe more than two-faced, you know, because you were changing what you say you believe and live in a different way or something like that. So in our culture now, hypocrite means kind of like, yeah, yeah, I don't care about you because, man, you, you're a liar, you know, is basically what it comes down to. I just appreciated that. Oh, good. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you. Yeah, I, I did remember other things. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay, well then, let me pray, and then we'll start in with the children and parents, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for an opportunity to come together to study your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done for us, because without what you've done, we'd all be doomed. We'd all be headed to hell. So, Lord Jesus, please let us understand how to best interact with people in a way that represents you in the way you want us to represent you. Not just as individuals, but collectively as the body of Christ. For, I mean, that's the way that you receive the most honor and glory is when we're united and connected to you as the head. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Get, let your Holy Spirit work in each and every one of our hearts and just come around us and let us understand your word in a way that brings you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, we Amen. love you. Amen. 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 Okay, so now he's talking to children. Is he talking to us or is he talking to real children? <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I can't that verse. Yeah. Children. What does? Yeah. It, no, he's talking to real children here. He's talking to Bobby. Hey, Bobby. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Bobby's like, hey, man, don't don't call me out in the middle of this, man. <laughs> but uh, he's talking really to you know a family. He's already talked to the husband and wife, right, and what their relationship needs to be. Now he's talking to the family. He's talking to the children. The ones that, you know, are actually central and core because they're the ones that will propagate that, that family uh, are the children, right? So he's addressing them because it's important. Now think about Proverbs. What does Proverbs say about bringing up a child? In the way that he should go. He's not getting his knowledge. Okay. Bring him up in the way he should go. In the way of the Lord. In the way of the Lord. That's right. Spare the rod and spoil the child. That's another one. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Your father's commandment is forsake not your mother's teaching. Good, good. So, and think about it. Bring up the way a child should be brought up, and when he is old, he will not depart from it too, right? But look at what the Proverbs. The Proverbs have quite a few wisdom sayings about children. And you say, well, why do they talk about children? Because a lot of times in our culture today, do children get that much importance or that much attention? Did you know that the statistics say that in a single parent home, a child is lucky if they can get five minutes a day of quality time with that parent? And it's only 20 minutes a day if you have two in the home today. Do you think you can bring up a child in the way they should go with just 20 minutes a day? No. And see, see where the problem lies? We become so busy. Who's the one that said, mentioned about the two-family working home, right? Isn't that a problem? So you see where we run into today? Kids go to the nursery all the time. That's, that's where they go. Where are the kids learning their values today? The nursery in the world. In the world, that's right. In school, in a nursery school. I'll tell you what, I have a great nephew and a great niece. And I'm surprised at the stuff that they know. You know, and I'm not talking about history and math. <laughs> I'm talking about biology, you know. <laughs> and they're six and ten. That's and they're six and ten. I was studying this about as early as eight that kids discover pornography. Yeah. I mean, well, it's, I wonder why. The people on the internet. 
is everything's right there at their disposal on the internet. I mean, and it's not hard to get there. And do you know what? Those kids can learn those computers. You know, at the earliest age, we old people are like, man, how do you get that done, man? Okay, oh, just do this, man. You know, it's yeah. like, whoa. It goes back to parenting, and, and I mean, it, you talk about a broken world, there, a broken world that happens. That's right. And the thing is, too, you know, we as Christians, is it right to basically take our kids out of the world totally and just say, well, I'm not going to let them be exposed to the world? No. Not totally, but there's something wrong with it being in a Christian school or a home school. Or yeah. Sure, sure. But that's not thinking of, you're still thinking of the stores, you're still thinking of the mountains yeah. of the world. My kids are little evangelists. Well, there you go. Yeah. But that's because that's what you brought them up to be. Yeah. Right? Well, that's what that Holy Spirit is. Well, sure. No, I mean, I understand that. But you being the leader, remember we were talking earlier about what the role of the father is. One of your roles is to minister to your family. Sure. And uh, so that's what you're doing, and that's great. But you're in the minority. Sure. I mean, I'm even talking through about Christians, too. I'm not just talking about the world. I'm talking about Christians. Yeah. We still have that same pervasive problem. Yeah. You know, like, how many times have you seen a pastor who's child grow up in church and they still stray so, oh, yeah. far, so far away? Right. Like, how does that happen? Even, even though that you tr like you tried your ball and a parent, right. at some point your kids have to choose him. Right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You, I would say that you would have to put enough in them for them to choose them, uh, choose right. them and then you Oh, absolutely. Kind of, you know, that's up to but it's real because see, I'm a missionary kid. My parents brought me up. I wasn't real sheltered, but I was brought up in a legalistic environment. And I was scared to death because, man, if I smoked, I was going to hell. If I spit on the street, I was going to hell. If, if I drank, I was going to hell. If I looked at a woman, I was going to hell. If I, and, and I could go on and on and on. So everything that they didn't want me to do, they had told me if I did it, I was going to hell. Well, according to them, heaven's the good thing place. is, y'all have different ways. Why are you together? Acts 2.47, you know, you're talking about coming and plugged in. And I was yeah, there. yeah. But see, I mean, and I'll tell you, for depending on how the parent brings up the child, if you shelter the child too much, guess what? As soon as they get out there, they're going to want to find out what it is that, why they were kept that way. That's why they have the problem. It's like sugar up there. Like, it is. Well, and they, they're they like, what was this? How come, you know, this is good. But see, the thing is, we need to let them live in the world, but not be of the world. That means every day they come home, you need to devote time to that child and say, hey, son or daughter, what did you learn today? What did you see in the world? And then give them the direction of the Lord that says, okay, what you saw there, that was good. That was somebody looking out for somebody. But see what they did here? Look what the Bible says. The Bible says that's not good. That's not what you should be doing. When we do it that way, they'll have something to contrast. Yeah. But if you shelter them, the problem is then they'll be like, what was I missing? And that's why we see a lot of pastors, kids, and whatnot, that once they get their freedom, they got to experiment and check everything out. And I'm not saying they may stay in that, but they're going to go out there and check it out to see what it is that they were missing. Now, one other thing there is yeah. race. You know, amen. You know, amen. I'm sure because we could be teaching kids now that, you know, in an environment that will teach them, I'm better than you. Right. We want to make sure that grace is all around. That's right. And I'll tell you, it's hard in our culture today because they're going to be working against an antithetical culture to what it is that you're bringing them up to, to follow. It's going to be something that they're going to be like, hey, how come you're strange, man? How come you don't join in with us? And you have to build up that character in them so that when that happens, they will understand that they don't have to hate that person for saying that, but that they just have to understand that Christ's way is different and requires a different kind of response than what the world would give them. Because if you don't build that into them, hey, my nephew, my great nephew is a good one. I mean, he's ADHD, but man, I'll tell you, if anyone tells him something he don't like, oh boy, fisticuffs is right there. And I mean, it's all the time. You know, I mean, his mom's having to deal with all kinds of problems with him in school. But that's because that's how it is. Just a second, Tad. Go ahead, Jeanette. You had something? Oh, I was going to say, it's not only about what you're saying also, but it's giving them 
be a children of age appropriate entertainment. There's not yeah. true. Even true. Three year old with a phone already. You have yeah. to like it. Good point. Yeah. 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 Ye
you're going to hell. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. These are kids. These are kids. Right. Even they won't understand right. that. That's but true. when you give them the Bible and give them the word, the Lord will speak to their heart so that That's you right. can interpret it to them at any age. That's, That's right. right. Oh, young, amen. Yeah, amen. Right. That's right. And remember, Kids are going to follow what their parents model, exactly. not just what they put before them in text, yeah. but what they model. Yeah. So you can show them the Bible all you want, but if you don't live it, they're not. They're going to say, "Oh, Dad and Mommy ain't doing that. So why should I do that?" You know, I mean, the, the, you'd be surprised how crafty kids can be with what they see. Yeah, yeah. They don't follow what you're saying, they I, follow what you're saying. Amen. I get it all the time when I'm driving the S-word, my sleep on my stuff. Yeah, we have it. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. But, you know, something, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. Give them the authority to check us. Yeah. yeah. We step out of line because yeah. we don't yeah. do profanity as a right, house. And right. We don't swear as a house. Amen. Right. Amen. Because the seven Bible prophecies are in the Bible. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Amen. So if one of my sons, he's 13, he's in middle school. He's like, Dad, you know, who's so great? And it's like, oh, I'm sorry. And, and it's Amen. beautiful to see that. Right. He yes, it is. Right. That, yes, hey, it wait is. Wait a minute. You know, let's make sure that says that, that right what back. they, what you taught them, took yeah. yeah. because they're coming back and they're Amen. reflecting it back on you. Amen. So that's good. Amen. Yes. Well, this is Joseph was sold into slavery. Yes, he was. He did not understand the language. Nope. And he could tell the Lord. So that did something for my heart. He went somewhere. He did not understand the language. That's right. He did not pick it up. That's right. And think about it. In his day, did they have any scriptures? No. No. So and there was no Genesis through Deuteronomy. There was no Torah. There was no nothing. But he had learned what Jacob had taught him about the Lord, and he lived it even though he was unfairly sold down into Egypt. Amen. Amen. Did you have something? I was just saying, like, yeah. for kids, do they really have enough self discipline to make choices for themselves? Because oftentimes I try to think about raising my own kids if I ever have any kids. The difference between indoctrination and self choice. Well, they think they do. You know, the kids think that they have self-discernment. They think, hey, I got this figured out. They know my nephew, my great-nephew, no, oh, man, if you try to tell him that what he's thinking or saying is wrong, no, he really. calls me on it so fast. Oh, what do you mean? Yeah, there's no way. I'm, I'm, you know, it's like, he's 10, and he's trying to tell me about the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees, and it's like... Don't you think that I might have just a bit more insight than you? You know? No, he's like, no way, man. No. <laughs> nope. Who? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, wisdom. Wisdom, of course, comes with age. I see it every, That's right. every week because I teach here on Sundays and um, Saturdays and on Tuesdays. Sure, sure. And just the difference in my fourth and fifth graders. Uh, to my second and third, to my kindergarten, of course, it's like Amen. night and day, fourth and fifth, oh no, we're too cool for anything that, that you are saying, and I'm like, okay, so I got to spin this just a different mm -hmm. way, and my second and third, they're, they're more, um, they receive, like, a right. lot, of, like, my, like, that grade, that, that age, it just, it's kind of easier, because yeah. you can say something, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, kindergartens are first. They're like, "What's in the sky?" Like, so saying all of that, like, yeah, every age, uh huh, you have to spin it a different way. So you do so that they can eat that bowl and just yeah. oh, God. Yeah. Like, but when you give it to them the right way, they are able to take it. Right. And, yeah. and we saw what Jesus said, right? Let the little ones come unto me and forbid them not, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we should be, just as open as a child is to that nurture if given properly. Yeah, you're right. That was said about age appropriate. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Everything has to be age appropriate. Huh? Was there anybody else? Oh, yeah, Kath. I know there's a big push now to get the kids out of the public schools because it's like a tsunami. You know, they're just going. They're being exposed to all different kinds of things that aren't developed really. Developmental, the right one. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Uh huh. Yep. Those. That's problematic. And did you have something, Andy? Yeah. Yes. With 
you I, or when we were raising our son, the thing that I noticed was between the ages of about three to eight, I was Superman. Uh, then, from then on, I was the dumbest thing on two legs. Where'd your cape go? Yeah, you yeah, know, no, I was the dumbest thing on two legs, and I was just really amazed that I could even just navigate well, my way through a day. Yeah. And then it's funny once he got out into the world and started working and finding out that some of the stuff I told him was true. Uh huh. All of a sudden, it's like eh, he wasn't so stupid after all. Yeah. Respect start coming back, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so look at what it says. It comes down to children, right? But remember, we've, we have to have a functional family to start with, husband and wife. When you have that, then look where you can go. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. We're supposed to obey our parents, right? What does the fifth commandment say? So that your life may be long on the earth. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah, there it is. But, <laughs> but, so, I mean, when you look at that, I mean, God established that. Because remember, God wrote that commandment with his finger on the stone, right? So it's about honoring. So there has to be a relationship. Again, we're talking relationship for it to be of any value. That's the first commandment with a promise. That it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. He's talking to kids, right? So see there, Bobby, if you obey your parents, sweet, you're going to live long in the land. How about that, huh? <laughs> if you cut that short, where's the land going to be? <laughs> That's eternal life they're talking about. That's right. They're talking about eternal life. But at the same time, what he's talking about, though, is still a familiar relationship between the child and the parent. Okay? The parent needs to obey and honor their parent. That is still relational. And that is crucial, but remember, it's kind of like what Simon and you were saying, that it's still based on how you bring them up. Amen. And let me tell you something, don't lose the love in bringing up your child. That's got to be central and pivotal, if it's going to be of any value, okay? Yeah, lots of money. And look what, look what he says, though, and I think this is essential, because sometimes, yes. what? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Fathers because don't perfect your children. That's right. Provoke each other. I wanted to kill him eventually. Okay. And so did you? Praise God. No. He oh, okay. He found the Lord. Okay. Good, good. So something came out of it, right? But look what it says. I mean, this is the only place we see that a child kind of gets a respite, right? Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. But bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Discipline doesn't necessarily mean punishment. Discipline means training, development, uplifting. Okay, That's what discipline is. It's about putting something before them that they can model, that they can follow and say, yes, that's how I need to be. And if you do that, then you're not... See, the problem is when you run a child into anger... Guess what? Guess where they go if, if you make them angry? They go the opposite way. They go try to find their support somewhere else. And the question is, where do they go to find it? So you need to be careful that when we bring them up, that we bring them up in the love of the Lord and showing them the love of the Lord. Yeah, Daryl? That's James 101. James 101. Amen. Amen. That's exactly right. So, I mean, we need to be careful when we bring up our children because they are important and Jesus made it clear so if Jesus made that clear then we need to be just as careful and as loving to them as parents need to be to them right amen yeah Richard they are indeed it's like your quiver being full of arrows right <laughs> amen Amen. And, and your quiver's getting fuller there. Good job. <laughs> to the top. Yeah, Simon, there you go. <laughs> how much enormous to please among the dad? Right. What happened to my wife? Right, right. But if we are supposed to be mom and dad, and we are supposed to be Christians, we have to follow God's will. Amen. Yes, we do. 
But unfortunately, not everybody gets that honor. You know, many children out there today don't have stable, responsible, yes. loving Christian yes. parents. So what we need to do, and, and man, and our culture has become so messed up because it's almost like you can't even talk to children anymore because they're afraid somebody's going to either oh, yes. steal them away or abuse them. And man, I don't know what's the matter with our culture that way. And and we got to look out for our children. But we, too, but we need to show the love of Christ to them. They need to understand that it's not just about, you know, that there's a bunch of bad people out there. You know, you know I, I remember one of my other nie great nieces. Their mother taught her, danger stranger, danger stranger. You know, and, oh, is that it? See there, I mean, I'm just flexing. You know? <laughs> got it backwards. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Danger <laughs> stranger. Yeah, Mark. I agree with you that we have to show the love of friends, yes, indeed. But unfortunately, as you know, the school is a story of the opposite of God. It's run by a secular yeah. system mm -hmm. and, and the liberals control the system right now. So you can't even mention God. That's right. So, so I love what we expect. See, uh, exactly. When I mean, that's what we expect. The, we have options. What do we expect, I should say. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But the thing is, how godly are the children that we have in our Christian schools turning out as Christians? Absolutely. Well, that goes back to the parents. Yeah, and it goes and back to the home. You're talking about That's right. public school is a choice. But it's That's right. It's a choice of the parent. It's all the whole to the parent. I'm telling you, it's a bigger issue than just being able to say it's a black and white solution. It's not like that. The issue is, is that the world is real and there are problems in the world. And we need to understand that those are true. And we need to love our children to such an extent we will take those steps and measures necessary to bring them up in the Lord. And it's not a cruel thing. You know, some people say, well, you're forcing the kid to do that. Well, what about those families that are forcing their kids to be homosexual? Because they are. The kids are already having a sex change at age eight. Wait a minute. That kid has no clue about where their gender is. You know, I mean, this is crazy, you know. But it's crazy, you know. Yeah. Now they actually have it where uh, it was on the news about a week or two ago, yeah. a lot of parents now are uh, allowing the child to wait till they get five years old to decide what gender they That's want right. to be. Right. Isn't that So cool. you yeah. grow wow. up now yeah. not being yeah. a boy or a yeah. girl. I can hardly decide. remember half of my stuff at five years old. Yeah. I don't even know who I was at five years old. <laughs> but you're right. You're exactly right. That's I've never heard it. How can a child say, okay, Dad, I want to be a girl? Yeah. Like, now you're saying, I mean, that's insanity. I have no idea. It's just to look at my wife, like, on the phone today, was saying that when um, certain, like, places of people, when their child is born, they aren't saying if it's a girl or a boy. Let, let them choose. Right? Yeah. But see, you can't change that chromosome. You can try to change an external thing, but you can't change that chromosome and make them a real woman. So, I mean, they're not really being changed from what they are. They're just externally being made to appear. You know? I don't know. It's just, it's like, God, I'm sorry, Lord. What's the matter with us? New York is what the law this year. The parents could have a choice. They just put an X. No boy or girl, X. Family, they're the Isn't that messed up? They lose minority benefits and women have minority benefits. Man, see the problem that we have in this world today? Exactly. They have all that stuff going on in schools and everywhere you go, and you try to teach your kids the right way, and they go in the world and see all this stuff. And, and, we don't have too much. Um, no, uh, and and see, that's why we need to be so actively involved with the children every day, so that when they come home, they can understand what the lies are, and what the fallacies are, and what the truths are. Yeah. Yeah. Or lesbian. And he's like, I know that's not true, but he's like, I don't want to get into conflict. And I said, Yeah, that's yeah. not your 
big place problem. to get into conflict. That's right. Where but we know that that's not true. Mm -hmm. We know that Christ doesn't make mistakes. Amen. You were a female, he made you a female. You Hallelujah. Male, he made you a male. That's and that's for, you are, for the ones that are saying, unfortunately, they're, they're blinded because the enemy can. He can put the rule over some of these kids, especially if they were never exposed to the word. And then they grow up in these environments where they think that, that this is the normal way. But I said, what you need to do is hold fast and just stay in prayer. That's yeah. all you can really do That's because you're 17. I don't want you getting into debates nope. about what people want to do. <laughs> That's right. Too. You're not going to win anyway. Have you ever gotten into a debate with one of those people that really, truly are locked in that? I have. It doesn't get anywhere. Yeah, no. exactly right. It doesn't get anywhere. They are locked in it. I mean, it's surprising how Satan locks yeah. them into that kind of and thing. And everyone's gifts not to be an apologist. Right? No, no, exactly. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, Daryl. You know, a lot of times social media oh, plays yeah. the parent. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. Just like I can look at First Baptist Orlando on Facebook, I yep. can look at First Crazy Orlando <laughs> Chat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that, that freedom is there to do both of those things. That's right. So if you have that, a lot of these young children are finding groups or cohorts that support anything in their mind. And they think it's mainstream. And they have no wisdom to discern, so they're just sucked in. That's right. You're right. And then they think, I'm there. I'm part of a great group. I've got, we're, we're revolutionary. We're taking it out to the world. And they don't even have a clue what revolutionary even means. Exactly. Exactly. So that's the issue with the children. Where are we at? Some 12. Okay. Bond servants and masters. We have this a lot now, right? Today, right? Oh, yes. Oh, man. What'd you do, David? <laughs> Bond servants and masters. We don't have that today, but in in, in a boss and employee. Oh, boss and employee. Okay, boss and employee. Okay, sorry, bonds. Boss and em I mean, boss and employee. Okay, there we go. Okay, employees obey your earthly uh, bosses. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but anyway, bond servants obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling. So, in other words, what he's saying is, anyone that has somebody in authority over them, we're supposed to. Do everything as unto the Lord. Okay? Now, does that mean everything? It means everything within the reason of what it is that God allows. Okay? So, we may not totally agree with them as an individual, but if they don't have some premise that is contrary to God's word, then we need to show love even to those hated bosses, right? Or presidents. Or, well, well you're talking ex-presidents because Romans 13 says we can't speak evil of our leaders, right? So anyway. <laughs> so, so earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart as you would Christ, Hey, I'll tell you, that's pretty serious. He's saying, as much as you would actually do it to Christ, you should be doing it to that boss or that person in authority, right? Wow, that, that may really require some serious humbling to do that, right? Because now it's not about me. It's about him through me to be able to do it. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because it was unfair, but yet he followed the Lord through it all, right? So he says, not by the way of eye service. In other words, you're not doing it, you know, to be a, I don't know, is brown noser a bad term? Yeah. Something like, well, you know, a people pleaser. Right. Yeah. You know, somebody that is trying to. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you, you, get, you get my point, right? <laughs> Hey, I was in the military, believe me. You know. There was a doctor that Wow. Okay. Hallelujah. But spiritual wealth. Yeah. That's but that's how it is, right? That's how it is in life. In the military it was that way. If you wanted to get ahead, you had to be a people pleaser. You know, because you even if you had to go against your principles, you as long as it got you ahead, that's all that mattered to you. So you would pretty much abdicate your principles so that you could get ahead. Also, is that how you got ahead? No. No, God got me ahead. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, guys. Am I turning red or what? So. Oh, 
<laughs> see dogs mean it, you know? I mean, my goodness. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean, the Lord led my path throughout all the military. But I saw, when I say I was perfect, no, of course not. But God was able to get me, you know, through a whole a whole career. And he, you found favor in there. That's right. And God, because he saw me being honest and truthful in a difficult situation, he got me where I got in my career. So I give him all the honor and the glory. It wasn't about me. So, but I didn't do it by eye service. I did it because I was doing everything as unto the Lord. See, I was doing exactly what he said here. I'm not saying I was perfect with a sincere heart because there were times I had some bosses that are there racking, frazzing, macking, racking, dacking, you know what I mean? That was me, you know? <laughs> and of course, uh, uh, oh, let me see. I believe that out there, Char Charisma. <laughs> but, <laughs> but people pleasers are the ones that say, hey, I don't care what my convictions say. I just want to, you know, get ahead because of that person or, you know, get them to notice me regardless of what I believe. But then where's our testimony, right? Out the window, right? But as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. So it has to be a commitment and a conviction that is at a heart level. In other words, it has to be a driven force. If it's not a driven force, you're never going to be able to do it. In other words, if you don't really have God living in your heart, you can say this all you want, but it's not going to happen without the Holy Spirit being in your heart and being the one giving you the strength to be able to endure. Because I don't care how Christian we are, and I don't care how surrendered we are to the Lord, we are going to find people that we don't agree with. Right. And, and most of the time when you don't agree with them, you don't say, hey, I love you there, boss. Good job, you know. You're gonna be like racking, frantic, racking, 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 you know. <laughs> but that's just who we are, and that's just because that's where we go. in a lot of times, when we think we got it under control, and all of a sudden we realize we don't, you know, because that's just human nature, right? That's where Paul talks about the old man. That old man tries to take over again instead of being the new man, right? So that's what he's talking about here. Rendering service with a good will as to the Lord and not to man. So in other words, we're not there to be man pleasers. That's what it really fundamentally comes down to. We will work anywhere. Well, most anywhere. Okay? If it's a place that's totally contrary to what God's principles are, we won't work there. But if it's a regular job, and I've seen too many Christians say, well, I'm not going to go to work at that company because they support abortions with some of their money. Well, that's all fine and good, but the question is then, if no Christian goes and works at that facility, how is anyone ever going to know about Christ if you don't go there? You see, a lot of times we think we're so righteous, well, we're not going to go where the unrighteous are. But that's where we're called to go. That's where our sin is there. And that's where our sin is. And we need to be a light to that darkness that we talked about earlier. That's what Paul was talking about. If, if we don't go with light there, how dark will be that darkness, right? Mm -hmm. We got to go so that we can be light in that darkness in those areas where, you know, somebody is misdirected. And you'd be surprised what a person can do in those types of situations given the Holy Spirit and the power of God. I don't think it's a word well, I, right. No, I know what you're saying. I mean, I know what you're saying. Well, yeah. I, remember I said you probably aren't going to go to a place that, you know. But I'll tell you what. I bet you there are people that God would give a drive and a desire to work at that facility to be light even in that darkest place. That's what abortion is. It's a dark place, right? Yes. That's as about as dark as it gets. Where do they need that light the most? Yeah, we have the clinic here. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah, there's a, there's a movie coming up. Oh my! What's it about? I'm planned. No, no, it was. It was a. I'm planned. Unplanned. Someone uh -huh. who was working there. She was a Christian, and she got convicted. Go figure. Yeah, so, I mean, these are real things. I'm not saying everybody can go do any of these jobs. It's got to be something that is God's will, and he drives you, and you get a call for it, okay? I don't just say everybody go work at an abortion clinic. No. 
God has to have a call on you to do it because it's you're you're going to be in a dark place. You can't work there. You got to shut that place down. Well, working there is the way you get the light into that no. darkness, and it could end up that way in God's I'm place. Not, listen, I'm sorry to yep. Okay. Now, I'm not saying you have a specific call from God. Right. Right. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It has to be a total call from God. But the thing is, I could not do it myself. And I sure would never do it if I had to do the abortion. I'd never do that. I would never do an abortion. Yeah, right. So, no, I understand what you're saying. Don't get me wrong. That's right. And that's why I'm saying it's got to be God's call to you to do that specifically. And he has to have equipped you to do it. Like a nurse. Working at the Holocaust uh, place. Okay. Jews. Right, right. Well, I mean, we can look back at things like that, and we can look at things like that, but the reality is, if, if we don't address the problem, it's going to continue. Okay? Yeah, but, but we have to... <laughs> We have to be careful, okay? Oh My yeah, yeah. It's uh, a slippery slope. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It is. is. It's a tough one. Yeah. Because as a Christian, therefore, you should never step there. I agree. Sorry. I agree. No. I agree. You know what I mean? I under. That's it's what I said at the beginning. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. You, you you can't can't part, I mean, that's right. You can't participate in sin. No. But I mean, where is the sin? At? Is the sin what? in witnessing? Is the sin no, no, in okay. going there to try to get there? Okay. Say. I can give you a drastic example, but let's give yeah. someone. It's like this, this company is killing people, so we say, okay, we're gonna go work there to win. Oh, Paul's a perfect example. You know well, I mean? it's like, well, but see, I mean, you're going to an extreme know, and making your example, and I appreciate it. No, I mean, believe me, I w I don't ever feel like I'd ever get the call to go work in an abortion clinic. I think that's, that's the point. It's okay, the is what you're it's got to be a call from the Lord because you never know what God can do. Because remember, it's not you doing it. We're it's God doing it, God it God through you. Right, right. Somebody got me that's that's what it is all about. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm here. Yeah. 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 Unplanned. Unplanned. Yeah. Yeah. Big. What about the people who would stand out front? in front of these abortion clinics and try to protest or uh, profess their faith that this is wrong to those who are coming in to try to get their attention before they go through the process. Well, if they do it peacefully uh, and in love... They forget the boundaries. Yeah. So they can right. stand they aside. The right. gets yeah, they've got to be careful to make sure that Christ's love shines through them in the process of doing it. They can't be hateful. If they come up and they're hateful about it, then they might as well not be. And it's usually not. And that's the issue. They've got to be loving. have a megaphone. That's right. You've got to be loving if you're going to make a statement for Christ. It's a peaceful demonstration. That's right. Where we gave water to the people and whatnot. And Remember they were doing, they came and they picketed us and we came and gave water to them? Yeah, but we went over. Oh, okay. 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 Well, hallelujah. Yeah, not camping world, the other stadium. Okay, okay. It was right there. Okay. Well, God's good. And I'll tell you what, it's got to be the Lord directing those things, though, because otherwise, I'll tell you, you that's when we talk about spiritual warfare, that is spiritual warfare because Satan is the one that came to kill and to destroy, right? That's what he does. That's him. Yes, Alan. I was going to say, just even taking the Lord out of it, coming out to a secular world, I was a nurse. So, but not all nurses can work with cancer patients. Not all nurses can work. So that's why there's different fields. That the Lord, even in that sense, if you're a Christian, the Lord leads you as to what fields you will work in. Um, here we were just speaking on Saturday about what God and Doug was mentioning that he didn't agree with something the way Ted was saying it. And... So then I was like, well, that's the medical interpretation. And he's like, I don't get that. And I'm like, that's okay. We're all different. We all come, but we all need each other. So that's in the secular way. But if we look at it like that too, that if the Lord is sending us, as I would even call it, as a missionary, 
-hmm. to work in these types of places, but it has to be the Lord. It has to be. That's what we got to find out. That's, and we're going to get to that. Because remember I said it's spiritual warfare? Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing is, too, we can't turn a blind eye to some of those things either. Now, there are ways to also combat it. We can do it through the government. We can try to do... Yes. How has that been working since 1978 or whatever, <laughs> right? Since Roe versus Wade. Jeff Beers. Jeff Beers. Maybe Chow. Yeah, did I you Roe versus Wade was way yeah. too long. Yeah. <clears throat> I want to add on to that. Um, about what they were saying. You can sit up here and you can say, no, I won't do this. No, I won't do that. But you can best believe if God moves in your direction. He may not put you in that building to go and change everybody, yeah. but it might be one person yeah. that come in that door that God have planned for that one female, yeah. and he selected you to go and cross her path. Yeah. And that's yeah. a choice. When he move in your heart and your mind, you can't stop it. I don't care how strong you think you are. Oh, but I think you cannot block the purpose. Can I add something? Sure, go ahead. It's more to me too. Like we understand that there are legislation and there is in play and everything like that. We can't control what people do, but we can remind people who are walking through these clinics, who are making those kinds of decisions. Sure, sure. God loves you. God Amen. loves the child. Only God can produce children. He like you That's can right. react, but That's only right. God can give kids. Amen. What we can't do as Servants of the Lord is mm. condemned for the church right. people. That's not our place. <laughs> exactly. So Amen. if this came upon us to end up in a facility that does abortion, yep. we can say we would never, we would never, but we right. gotta remember that God was never so to the left or right. to the right. right. He right. was never so extreme where no, 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 or walking around with a picket sign mm -hmm. and killing. God was loving when he was All the time. on this yeah, earth. Amen. He was he embraced amen. everyone with love. Amen. So even if you know someone is gonna do something bad, like abortion is killing. No, but if you knew someone was gonna rob somebody and they had the gun, you can tell them, listen, hey, you don't have to do this. Right. Because you're loved. There's somebody out here who loves amen. you because Jesus Christ. You can say that same message to the person sure and if it's supposed to resonate in their heart, it's gonna resonate in their heart. Amen. What we can't do is make sure that we're not crossing the line of condemning people That's or right. being judgmental That's right. or so self righteous. Oh yeah. That'll and turn them off right away. Yeah, and then yeah. people are gonna just be like, I don't need to listen to you because like it says in the Bible, when you are doing the service of the Lord, make sure you're doing it gently. Amen. And first Peter, when we yeah. study Peter, it talks about that. Yeah. yeah. That's how we Amen. approach everything. That's how our message of the Lord. If we're going to have impact with our message, it has to be in love. Yeah. I'm just about finished there, Doug. So I'll, I'll fill you in on Saturday. Okay, brother? Okay. You got it. So, I mean, when you look at all this, where, where am I here? Bond servants and masters. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So what we see is that no matter what, knowing whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord. So when we go do what the Lord has called us to do, like I say, think calling all the time. We need to see that God is active in our lives, calling us daily to do something for him. Yeah. And sometimes the calling is wait, wait on the Lord. Sometimes that's what it is. But waiting doesn't mean inactivity. Waiting means you do what, you know, what we normally would do, keep active your prayer life, keep active your thanksgiving, keep active meeting the needs of those around you where they are. But that calling to you will come at a right time and he will equip you for it, okay? So, masters, now look, whether he is a bondservant or he is a free. So, it all comes from the Lord and we look to him in the process, right? Okay, so masters, do the same to them and stop your threatening <laughs> knowing that he who both their master and yours is in heaven and that there is no partiality with him. So in the end, what it all comes down to is just listening to what the Lord has to say and trusting him and then not just sitting around but then going and do it when the calling comes, right? And look at that. That's all about relationship because it's not just about husband and wife. It's not just about children and parents. But it's also about our relationships with those subordinates with their, you know, bosses. Okay? So, any final questions, comments, agreements, disagreements, firings, all that stuff. That goes with it. <laughs>
Oh, they're not having a class next week? <laughs> they busted me, man. What's up with that? We're gonna have to do a coffee shop, eh? I, man, I did not know that. I didn't get an email or anything that said it. It wasn't. Was the church? I guess. Ah, I know there's no ESL. Who wants a break? Okay, so no ESL on Tuesday night? Okay. Who wants a break? Had anyone else heard about that? No class next week? Okay, I'll email out um, if, if I hear that they're, if we'll hold it, okay? As far as I know, I mean, I didn't know that we weren't, but... That's the first time. I don't think there are any ways to say that that doesn't seem to go for it. Okay, well, if if I hear, I'll, I'll get in touch with Cindy and find out. And if there is class, I'll email out and say we'll still hold class, okay? So, fair enough. Well, you can take two more hours then. Two Good, more hours. Finish. I'm yeah, right yeah. <laughs> I've already had some people leave, so I better. <laughs> no. Another hour. But anyway, hey, I, this, is, this is really great information. And I'll tell you what. We'll see how Paul wraps it up with spiritual warfare, and we'll start discussing that. And I guarantee you it'll be just as exciting seeing how we come into this specific issue and how God gives us the power to be able to overcome in all of these situations, same situations we've been talking about, but what he gives us to be able to overcome. I think it's awesome. So, good enough? All right. Well, let's go ahead and pray, and you folks can go. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your word. Your word is truth. And we thank you for it, Lord, because without it, where would we be? We need you, Lord, and we really need your word. Help us to understand it and to apply it and to put aside any of our prejudices and just accept it as you would have us accept it so that you can use us in the way that would bring you the most honor and the glory. We thank you for that, Lord. Now, be with us as we go. Help us to be a witness for you and to share the gospel and to love others the way you have called us to, to be that light in darkness. We thank you for your loving kindness. Now, Holy Spirit, just work in each and every heart here and make it a real relationship on a daily basis. We thank you and give you the honor and the glory. And as always, we love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And if there's anyone that we don't have their email address, but would like us to email them. Yeah, let me have it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
and you get registered at that then I have all of the notes right up there on that web page. But you have to be registered as a class for it to show up on your My First Store item. You mean that we sign in and join? No, no, I don't think so. Okay, okay. 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 show me what you have. Let's see if it looks familiar. Yes, no. <laughs> Okay, if you go Okay, look up here. See, I'm going to go to myfirstorlando.com, right? Okay, when I go there, okay, now it brings me to this page. See, and there's a sign in, right? Now, let's see. Oh, here, request account. See, I have an account. Look, I signed in what I was showing her. Let me show it to you right now. Okay. That's what I Okay. Okay. While well, you get that account, okay. Hang on. Let me let me get this one going. Okay. Let's see. Okay. See how over here. Now this because I'm a teacher, so I'm and I have several groups, but. If you look here, see it says adults like you. Well, that's because you're not signed in for anything yet. So when I come over here to study of Ephesians, for instance, and I see, see here, once you you're in, see you'll have a place where you have files. Oh, okay. Okay. And then when I come to files. See, that's where I have the notes, the notes and the yeah. emails that I sent out on the notes. Okay. But now, oh, let me turn off this thing because I've been recording. 